God gave us every spiritual truth that we need to live godly lives and to get to heaven in the Scriptures. Hello, I'm Phil Sanders, and this is a Bible study in search of the Lord's way. And today we'll study the all-sufficiency of the Bible. Stay tuned. In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has the way. We believe that the Bible is the revelation of His way. We invite you to join us in Search of the Lord's Way with Phil Sanders. Welcome to In Search of the Lord's Way. We're here to search the Scriptures for God's will. Because God is holy, we can regard every word that comes from God as sacred. Because our holy God knows everything and is all wise, we can consider the Word of God as wiser than anything that comes from man. Because God is holy, wise, and loving, we know that every word that comes from God is for our best interests. Because God has the words of eternal life, and because we love Him, we must listen and obey His words carefully. Thanks for taking time with us today. We want to be a part of your life each week. Many in the world do not like what the Bible teaches. Some in the religious world imagine that they can improve on the biblical faith and provide a Christianity more pleasing to the world. So they reinterpret the Scriptures, or they try to make them say what they want rather than listen to what God actually says. Others believe Christians ought to change their moral standards so the world can live without shame and feel free to speak and to practice things that the Bible calls sin. But the idea of changing God's eternal teaching in any way offends God and disturbs those who love Him. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 4 and verse 4, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We need to pay much closer attention to the Word of God because we need every word that comes from God. God hasn't forgotten anything or neglected to tell us anything that we need to know to live holy lives or to function as His church or to receive eternal life in heaven. We aren't lacking anything. Our Bible can guide us into all the truth. Are you reading the Bible? Now, we offer the study on the all-sufficiency of the Scripture free. And if you'd like a printed copy or a CD of our study and you live in the United States, we're offering this free little booklet, Give Me the Bible. So mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call our toll-free telephone number. That number is 1-800-321-8633. We also have many materials free on our website, searchtv.org. The Edmond Church will now worship in song. We'll read from Galatians 1, verses 6 to 9, and then we'll explore the all-sufficiency of God's Word.
Our reading today comes from Paul's letter, his epistle, to the province of Galatia. Galatians 1, verses 6 to 9. And he's dealing here with some people who are trying to change the gospel, trying to change the Word of God into something that they prefer. And in this case, it was Jewish Christians who were trying to add the old law to the gospel. He says, I'm amazed that you are so quickly deserting Him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. A very strong statement from the lips of the Apostle Paul. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, we're grateful for your love and we're grateful that you have given us your word and that it's complete and final and authoritative. Help us to pay close attention to it and to be obedient. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible clearly reveals that God, from the time of Moses, wanted His wisdom, His instructions, His promises to be written down and preserved for later generations. Exodus 24.4 says that Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and this book was preserved in the Ark of the Covenant, according to Deuteronomy 31 and verse 26. God commanded Moses in Deuteronomy 31, 11 to 13, that every seven years you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Assemble the people, men, women, and little ones, and the sojourner within your towns, that they may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, and be careful to do all the words of this law, and that their children who have not known it may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. This law was vitally important to the Lord God, and He commanded in Deuteronomy 4 and verse 2, that you shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Again, Moses wrote in Deuteronomy 5 verse 32, that you shall be careful therefore to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. A third time God said in Deuteronomy 12, verse 32, Everything that I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it or take from it. Now God wanted His instructions to be obeyed just as He gave them without any change at all. So settled was the word that God gave that Solomon said in Proverbs 30 and verse 6, Do not add to His words lest He rebuke you and you be found a liar. We know that Joshua made a covenant with the people. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, according to Joshua 24, verses 25 and 6. We know that Samuel told the people the ordinances of the kingdom and wrote them in the book and placed it before the Lord, 1 Samuel 10, 25. God told Isaiah in chapter 30, verse 8, to go 
write it on a tablet before them and inscribe it on a scroll that it may serve in the time to come as a witness forever. We know that Ezra set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. Ezra 7 and verse 20. The New Testament uses the phrase, it is written over 90 times. This phrase stresses the authority of God's written word. In Matthew 22, 29, Jesus rebuked the Sadducees because they didn't know the scriptures nor the power of God. God undoubtedly intended that His words and deeds be preserved in written form in Scripture. And we must recognize that what God writes is, is not just written on paper with ink, but it stands written for all people in all places for all time. God has never allowed men to tamper with or to edit His written words. Paul told the Corinthians that they were not to go beyond what is written in 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 6. Later, Paul said that it's disgraceful and underhanded to practice cunning or to tamper with God's Word, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 2. When some Jewish leaders tried to pervert the gospel, Paul said that they were accursed, as we read in Galatians 1 verses 8 and 9. When some false teachers tried to change the doctrine that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, John said in 2 John 9 that anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. When people tamper with, twist, or edit the teaching of God, they cannot expect to remain in the favor or grace of God. At the end of the book of Revelation, John warned against anybody tampering with that particular book. Revelation 22, 18 and 19 says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. Of course, what is true of the book of Revelation is also true of every book of the New Testament. We must not add or take anything away from what God has caused to be written. The Bible doesn't need to be rewritten or edited. It needs to be reread. Why would God forbid adding or taking away from His Scriptures? It's because God's message is complete and final. It says everything that God intended to say. To change Scripture in any way challenges God's wisdom and His authority. Changing God's words to suit our culture or rewriting God's laws to please ourselves is an act of utter rebellion and dishonors God. Changing God's teaching or His moral laws is saying men are smarter and wiser than God, that they know better than He knows. That's presumptuous. The Lord Jesus promised the apostles in John 14, 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. They not only had the privilege of hearing the voice of Jesus, they also had the Spirit to remind them of the Lord's teaching. Again, Jesus said in John 16, 12 to 13, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own authority. But whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. The Lord Jesus knew the apostles would face many problems, and would need guidance into all the truth. Jesus didn't withhold any truth. The Spirit guided them into all the truth. Now, if they received all the truth, then no more revelations would come in later centuries. They did receive every truth needed by the church to live as God would have them live and to have eternal life. 
The Apostle Peter said in 2 Peter 1 and verse 3, that His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who has called us to His own glory and excellence. Peter never imagined that they were cheated out of some spiritual truth that they could only find outside the Scriptures in some human tradition or some feeling that they think came directly from the Holy Spirit. He never taught that our culture's values trump whatever God said long ago. No. He saw that everything we need can be found in the Bible. Paul also understood the all-sufficiency of the Scriptures. He wrote to the young preacher Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, verses 14 to 17, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation, through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Now, Paul didn't point Timothy to later-day prophets, to church councils, or to cultural trends that would correct the teaching of the Lord. No, he told Timothy, to look to Scripture and to what he had heard. We must do the same. The Scriptures can make us wise to salvation. They are God-breathed and profitable. We aren't lacking anything when we possess the Scriptures. Acts 17, 11 says, Now these, speaking of the Bereans, were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica, for they received the Word with great eagerness, examining the Scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. They wanted to know what was true. And Paul said, the Scriptures, of course, are true, and they're profitable for teaching. Psalm 119, 105 says that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Christianity is built on teaching or doctrine. The Lord Jesus said in John 18, 37, For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I've come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. And everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Acts 2.42 says that the early church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. The New Testament preserves this teaching. Paul urged Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2, "...and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also." Paul was interested in perpetuating what had already been taught, not in looking to some later-day church canon or supposed prophecy. Second, the Scriptures are profitable for reproof. Scripture teaches us convincingly what is right and wrong and rebukes us for our sins. The psalmist cried out in Psalm 119, 9 to 11, how can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Reproof leads to repentance. Now repentance is a change of heart that leads to a change of ways. Reproof gives a need for this third thing that's profitable in Scripture, and that's correction. The Scriptures move us to repent and to correct our wrongs and to leave the false teachings for the truth. Acts 18 introduces us to a, a man named, a Jew named Apollos, who was an eloquent preacher. But he was only acquainted with the baptism of John and didn't know about baptism into Christ. Acts 18, verse 26, that he began to speak out boldly in the synagogue. But when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Now, Apollos didn't get angry at Priscilla and Aquila for their correction. And you know what? When we're corrected, we shouldn't get angry, but we should humbly change and thank God for the truth. Repentance brings healing to our souls. And that's why repentance is so very important. Fourth, 
Scripture is profitable for training in righteousness. The instructions of the New Testament and the examples found in Scripture train us how to love and care for others, how to serve and how to worship God, how to evangelize, how to restore the fallen, and how to be the church that Jesus loves. It teaches us how to live godly lives and how to go to heaven. It teaches us to be like Jesus. We need the examples that are found in the New Testament to guide us in doing good to others. In Scripture, we learn how to forgive, how to be patient, how to endure hardship, and how to serve. The gospel message is all sufficient for all time in all places. We must preach the gospel that the apostles preached in the first century. 1 Peter 1, 22-25 says, Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you've been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding Word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls. But the Word of the Lord remains forever. And this Word is the good news that was preached to you. Psalm 119, 160 says that the sum of your Word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Oh, how thankful that we have a Bible that meets all our needs and comes to us even 2,000 years. Thankfully. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful for Your providence in Your Word and that we can know what Your will for our lives is and that You meet every need and teach us all that we need to know. Father, bless our studies and help us to be faithful to You and to love You with all our hearts. May Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The same gospel that purified souls in the first century will purify souls today. There's only one imperishable seed planted in the hearts of people, causing them to be born again into Christ. And that seed existed in the first century and will last until the end of time. If we corrupt or change that seed, it won't produce a truly born again person. It'll produce something else outside of the truth. Our souls are purified by obedience to the Lord's gospel truth, not by obedience to a gospel reconfigured to suit some human tradition or our culture. Hebrews 2 verses 1 to 3 says, Therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, 
and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? God hasn't called us to follow our feelings or to be like those who surround us. He's called us to obedience to His inspired and all-sufficient Word. 2 Corinthians 10, 18 says, For it's not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. Are you paying close attention to God's holy Word? The New Testament teaches all that we need to know to become a Christian and to live the Christian life. We can know the truth and be saved. To become a Christian, believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is God's Son. Repent of every sin and turn to what is right. Confess Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. Be baptized into Christ, immersed in water, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. When you're baptized, God forgives your sins and adds you to His church. You become a child of God, and after you become a Christian, oh, stay close to God by living faithfully and abiding in the words of Jesus. Well, we hope that today's study about Scripture has blessed you. This month we're offering this free booklet, Give Me the Bible. If you live in the United States and you want a free printed copy or CD of this message, then mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083, or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org, or you can call the search office toll-free at 1-800-321-8633. Now, you can download these lessons or a newsletter at searchtv.org. There's also a schedule of our programs and a map with the location of churches that are in your area. You can also catch us on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, Search TV Ministry. We also offer free Bible correspondence courses. Now, don't worry. We're not here to get your money. We're here to help you get to heaven. So please get involved with the Church of Christ. And if you're looking for a healthy biblical church home, We'll be happy to help you find one. Well, we'll be back next week, Lord willing. So keep searching God's Word with us and tell a friend about this program. God bless you and we love you from all of us at In Search of the Lord's Way.